All right, I'm back with a video about why I think the OpenAI ChatGPT API sucks. Mainly there's a few reasons and I've actually created a simple program here that can demonstrate the real issue here with the API and we're going to be going through this today. But let's talk a little bit about how I'm approaching this problem. And basically what I'm doing is I am trying to make a request to OpenAI's server for a very specific data model which that data model is going to be ChatGPT 3.5, the Turbo Edition. Now I've used the Turbo Edition previously on a video if you would like to see a comparison of whether or not ChatGPT 4 and 3.5 Turbo is worth it, I do have a video on that. But today I want to create a Python app here in Linux that's going to make a request out to OpenAI server. And then I'm going to wait for a response back from that request and actually see how long it takes for this to occur. You think people that are paying basically per token of use on OpenAI's API would be prioritized over everyone else, but I don't know that that's the case. At least we'll be exploring that today. Let's first take a look at a simple program that I made. I have it here in my timing directory and it's called requestPy. So I wrote a Python script out and in this Python script, it's pretty simple. I have an endpoint that I'm trying to reach. I have a few headers that are required by the API including the bearer token, my payload that I'm going to send down right here, which is actually a prompt that says, give me a list of items that I need for a picnic and be as specific as possible. So that's a question I want an answer to specifically from the chat GPT 3.5 model. Then I'm going to use a start time and an end time to time how long the response takes to get back from the chat GPT API. And I think you'll be a little surprised. Take a guess in the comment section below right now, on how long you think it's going to take. Anyways, we're gonna spit out the time in seconds and finally print out the message if we get a successful message. Of course, that's a JSON string that comes back to us. We're gonna decode that and specifically show the message that comes back from the response. So I'm excited to get this test going. And one statistic I want to show you that some people aren't aware of is that 53% of visits are abandoned if a mobile site takes longer than three seconds to load. So this is very important in the world of mobile apps and web, the attention span is not long. Average sites get a 16 second look through before people abandon the site. But if something specific on the site can take up to three seconds to load, if it's an app, mobile site, doesn't matter, more than half of users go and abandon that site altogether. This is an important statistic to take into consideration. Of course, this is from the consumer insights with from Google that's given to us. So in order to understand where that data comes from, this is actually from March, 2016. This number has probably grown. Google Data Global with 3,700 aggregated samples anonymized from Google Analytics data from a sample of M websites that opted into sharing this benchmark data. So basically what I have to do in order to get this run is to supply my OpenAI API key. I do have a developer account. And if you haven't seen the place where you can generate new API keys on OpenAI's website, you can do this yourself so you can test these things out as well. You can create a new secret key and put in some sort of a text that designates the key that you're using. So mine will just be test. And then I'm going to create that secret key. With that test key made, I'm going to use it. I put that key in and now I can run my script. Hopefully everything will go fine. And I meant Python 3. So when I run this, it'll take a few moments because what's happening is I've actually made that request and I'm now waiting for a response. And in the background, the script is actually timing. So we should expect a result here soon. It's been a few seconds since this has actually ran, but we finally got an answer to our request. So we can see here, here is the actual payload of what came back to us. And the most important number is right here at the bottom, which you'll notice is around 15 seconds. Now you might be thinking, well, 15 seconds isn't too bad, but imagine making a mobile app, a mobile app that somebody is using to scroll through or swipe through. And for some reason, you need a little bit of AI generation, meaning you need to actually access the OpenAI API in order to get an answer back from the server for your application. You can now see why this amount of time sucks, especially after most people will just call it quits after three seconds. Our attention spans have really gone down and this is a major flaw currently in the OpenAI API, at least in my opinion. Now they have many varying different models to test from. 
Let's do another test real quick, but before we confirm that this is actually an issue, what I'm going to do in my payload this time is I'm gonna make it a little harder prompt, but before I do, I'd like to actually time this prompt, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this actually into ChatGPT through their web interface. All right, so I have my ChatGPT interface here and I have a new prompt ready to go. The idea here is I'm going to ask it to give me a list of items for a picnic again and time as soon as I hit enter. So I'm gonna do that and then press the start button and then stop whenever I get the button that says it's done generating. So I'm going to start this timer as soon as I press enter and now we can see how fast we're getting the results. So it seems to be pretty much on par with what we actually saw through the API request. Let's see if it takes under 15 seconds to get the response back or if it takes more. The time took a right around 23 seconds to get this entire result back. So we can see that the API is kind of on par with what we see with the API. But one thing I will warn is that this is not the turbo model. This is just the base model of chat GPT 3.5. So the turbo model should be much faster. So if I'm getting a result of around 23 seconds to get all this information out, which actually I believe has more information, we're gonna go back and check that out. You can definitely see how developers using the API may not be happy with these results. Now there are different models that you can call with, with OpenAI's API. And I'm gonna exit out so we can look at what we got. Well, we got 20 different items versus the 15 different items that we got from ChatGPT. So all in all, it is faster than the standard ChatGPT 3.5, but again, it takes 15 seconds, even though it's in what they call turbo mode. And we'll change the code up so we can make it a little more complicated. For those of you who'd like the code, let me know in the comment section below and maybe I'll put it up in the repo so you can give this a shot yourself. So I'm gonna try a new prompt to, just to get a feel for the timing. Explain in great detail how an application gets launched to the public. That'll take some thinking. Now let's see what happens when I rerun this. In the meantime, let's talk about why this is so frustrating for developers. Mainly, this is frustrating because there are several negative things that come out of this, including data processing delays, a slowdown of workflow and processes, maybe data retrieval, updates from the API, which basically creates wasted time. This will impact our performance on our applications that we build with the API. And of course, what it really boils down to and what is the most frustrating is the user interface. And with today's day and age where users expect a quick and responsive application, slow APIs like this one can lead to many potential users to leave before they even actually got to use the application to its full extent, which we all probably understand is a big deal. This second round took 34.79 seconds, which doubled the time of the last prompt. So again, it also depends on the complexity of the prompt. It's not just a 15 second worst case scenario. It all depends on the complexity of what you're asking the AI to do, which in my opinion, negatively impacts a developer's ability to write engaging and responsive applications using their API. Now, I don't wanna completely hate on their API. I gotta say, in general, it is very well written and easy to use, including packages that are available for Node.js and Python, so you can get to using it really quickly. You don't have to write anything out on your own, sort of like what I had in my script. That's not necessary. But what is necessary is to understand the different types of models that exist here. Now, I won't get too much into this, but this is really the caveat that I was hinting at earlier. You can, in fact, use ChatGPT 3.5, the Turbo Edition, to get answers for your various different API requests. But there are different models that you can also use that are even slower, such as ChatGPT 4, or other models that can perform completely other tasks, as you can see here. But under all these models, you'll have to check out and see what is available and what their advantages and disadvantages are. If you'd like me to take some time and actually run some more response time tests on some of the other models here, for example, ChatGPT3 has many models that you can actually use, which are a little older, but they are much faster and still pretty capable depending on the application that you're using them for, which could be an extreme time savings when compared to some of the other models that are currently available in the API. As you can tell here, ChatGPT3 has DaVinci, Curry, Babbage, Ada, and of course, varying other models. But if you're used to ChatGPT 3.5's output, you're not gonna get this with the latest models under the GPT-3 header. But again, let me know if you want me to time these in the comment section below. It might be an exciting thing to do. We'll do it if other people are interested. Either way, I just wanted to briefly talk about why I think the OpenAI API currently sucks. 
Hopefully they get this a lot quicker, or they get response times way down. Most APIs are generally considered to have an average response time of 0.1 seconds to a full second, in which a user can't even recognize the speed at which information is being returned from an API. So if we consider that a good category, we've already seen from ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo that those times can be anywhere from 15 times that amount to up to even 30 times that amount. It's gonna make it hard for developers to really make nice tools using this while trying to maintain a user's short-lived patience for the application to respond. Anyways, if you enjoyed this type of content, make sure to smash that like button for me. Are we going to explore more models? Let me know in the comment section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video.